Who is the best sniper in the world? Is it Vasily Saitse? The hero of the movie Enemy at the Gates? The best Soviet sniper? No, it is not from the Soviet Union. It is from a country that almost beat the Soviet Union and it is 10 times, 50 times smaller than the Soviet Union. Finland, the white death. Mr. Simo Haiha. As an American, can you pronounce his last name? Hai Ha. Estonian and Finnish are very similar. It's almost like brother nations, our language and culture and everything. Geographical location. You can't say Estonia and Finland are brothers. I'll be reviewing today the best sniper in the world of my brother and country Finland. This guy shot over 500 kills. He was a Finnish farmer. He was used to plowing his fields with his iron plow, but when he went to war, he didn't use no scopes, none of this fancy technology. He used his iron sight, which was, I guess, more close to his iron plow. And he plowed fear into the Soviet lines, picking off 500 plus targets, only using a bolt action iron sight weapon. That is white death for you. To show some respect to the brothers from another mother, to all of the Finnish nation, I will play you a Finnish tune. Terve, Suomi pojat! Tervetuloa siis taas kaikille. Ollaan täällä Viras Metsäs ja Kertasharjoituksis. If you are from America, this was some cultural education for you. This intro is already very long. I have two more things to do. And first of them are Patreons. We cannot get around the Patreons because they are the people who make this channel possible. They make me able to go on with my depression and all my problems that I have. I still have people who support me and I'm very thankful. It's you. The Patreon. I have three new names for you, three new heroes of this channel. First of all, we have Bill Murray. Is it the Bill Murray? Yes, it is. Thank you, Bill Murray, for supporting the channel. Secondly, we have Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. And lastly, we have Mr. Daniel Bishop, a name that I have said on this channel many times in the hat competition, in the cup competition, and now in the Patreons. Daniel, you're a hero of this channel because you have done a lot for this channel. Thank you. If you want to support the channel, be like Daniel. Become a Patreon. Now the second thing is about the Son and Soldier Hat competition. I have made some changes. Took me a while. I tried to figure out the best layout for the game. My handwriting is horrible, so I have to work really hard to make it look pretty. And I did that. Took me a few hours, if you can believe it. Here's a preview for you. Look at this new layout. I mean, maybe it doesn't look much, but actually I, I worked really hard on this. I deleted all of it. I put it all back. Beautifully trying to make a good handwriting here, but uh, it's really tough for me because I write like a pig So I had to really delete something, write it again, delete it again, write it again to make sure it is even and beautiful And I'm really satisfied with it. I hope you are also. Now if you can, don't skip that one People are really passionate about their states to win and I think we can all have some fun out of that Go and grab your Estonian and YouTuber cup. Let's dive into the white death November 30th, 1939, just three months after the outbreak of another world war. The Soviet Union has declared war on my home country of Finland. Within days, Soviet troops advanced across the nation, but they had no idea of the resistance they would run into. The negative 45 degree weather, negative 43 degrees centigrade, would be the negative 45 degrees Celsius. It is the coldest Estonia and Finland have ever seen. I don't know if temperatures ever get that low in America. I think this is lower than the temperatures get in Alaska. Even Alaska doesn't have these temperature, I think. You can fix me in the comments if I'm making a huge mistake right now. Minus 45 Celsius. This will kill you quite fast. The least of the communist invaders concerns when they found themselves in my sights. Because I am Simo Hawa, the deadliest sniper in history. I am the... Okay, it's Hawa, Hawa, not Haiha. 
they pronounced Y with U, how well. The deadest sniper in history only using his iron sight. Actually, he's quite short and he was a farmer, so he's a man of humble beginnings, but he's deadly. More deadly than you could imagine a farmer could be. The White Death. White Prior death. to the war's start, Germany and the Soviet Union had agreed to divide up Eastern Europe into spheres of influence. Estonia was taken already. Within the Soviet's reach. Stalin quickly made impossible demands of Finland, including that we cede large amounts of territory along the Finnish-Soviet border, supposedly for security reasons, such as the protection of Leningrad, which lay only 32 kilometers from the border. My nation flatly refused, and the Soviet... See, Estonia is just below Finland, you can see it on the map. We are red, because in 39, the Soviets marched in Estonia and we couldn't fight them. Finland didn't do that. Finland actually resisted very aggressively, and that won them their freedom. They didn't have the Soviet occupation for 50 years that we did. They didn't have two broken generations or deported grandfathers like we do. Hooray for Finland, hooray for white death. They really saved their nation. The Union quickly declared war. With 750,000 soldiers, 6,000 tanks and over 3,000 aircraft, the Soviet military absolutely dwarfed our Finnish military, which was comprised of just 300,000 soldiers, mostly reservists and civil guardsmen, a few dozen tanks and 100 aircraft. Stalin ordered the invasion of Finland, giving no thought to the coming winter, as he assumed his armies would roll over us long before the worst weather set in. Just as Napoleon had underestimated the Russian winter over a hundred years before, Stalin too severely underestimated winter weather. No country has been able to invade Russia because of winter and the size of it. Napoleon tried. The winter killed off most of his army and the Russian army picked off the rest. Hitler actually was very successful until the Russian winter kicked in and he lost half of his army to the winter. And Stalin and Russians all know this, they are uninvadable because of the winter and of the vastness of their size, but they, there is one country that is colder and harsher, which is Finland. If you think Russia is hard to invade, Russians had a really, really difficult time invading Finland. For them it was really harsh. That gives you an idea, idea of Finnish people who live in that climate, who, who live like that. They are really strong people. Not an easy country to invade, not an easy nation to take over. And the impact it would have on his army. As the unseasonably cold winter of 1940 set in and slowed Stalin's beleaguered armies down in a frozen hell, our Finnish resistance moved in to halt the Soviet advance. Knowing we couldn't match the Soviets on one-on-one -on -one basis, we adopted Moti, what today would be called asymmetrical warfare tactics. We would routinely allow Soviet forces to push deep into our territory, leaving them overextended. Then we'd attack their supply lines while running lightning raids against the Soviet flank. Frozen in by the severe weather and plagued by terrible logistics, the Soviet war machine quickly ground to a halt. But the greatest of the terrors awaiting the Soviets in the winter woods was me. An unassuming, 5 foot, 1.5 meter tall farmer named Sim. He's a very small man, he's a very small, but the deadliest of them all. I was born in a farming town near the Russian border, and I spent my entire life in the harsh Finnish countryside. As a child, I naturally took to shooting, becoming a prolific hunter, and sharpening the marksmanship skills that would make me a legend one day. In 1925, I served a mandatory one-year term in Finland's army, where I was introduced to an M2830 rifle, replacing my Russian-made Musin Nagat M91. Honing my shooting skill even further, I was able to achieve a firing rate of 16 shots per minute at the range of 500 feet, 125 meters. 16 shots per minute, and if they all hit, this guy is like a machine gun. Only he hits all the time. This is a very fast firing rate to hit from that distance back then. Incredible. This man is just a natural talent. You have one, one, one in a million of those. He's a very accurate man. He has a talent for it. Now, I'm sure I don't have to really talk about this th uh, that much because you all know Winter War and you all know White Death and Simo Haya because this thing has become a meme. How a huge Soviet army loses to Finland. Winter War has become a meme actually. And let it become a meme. Soviet Union really failed. They failed. I'm so glad. My friends, it is time to dive into the Stone and Soldier Hat competition. Give it a shot. See the new layout. It is really getting tense because Texas, yeah, it has the first place, but 
other states are very close behind and this one Texas Texas will not take this one home as easily let me tell you that Arizona will pass it California will pass it check it out this is how it is we have Texas number one 21 points we have Arizona 17 Florida 15 California 13 and that way down we go from there let's put five more points we have Robert West long lost son of Kanye West I'm Kanye has a son it's called East West right now it's the father of Kanye West Otsego Minnesota way old your horse Robert Robert's not a regular person he's a special one because he got two hats Oh boy, I, I forgot to put the states of the day green lines under it, but I will, don't worry, I will. And I'm pretty sure Minnesota already was state of the day. We will put all of the lines, uh, it will happen. Minnesota will get two points. 13 for Minnesota, baby. It is sharing the fourth place with California right now. David Drinkwater. I'm saying it like that because it's the Estonian pronunciation. David Drinkwater. Well, I do drink water. I hope you do also. If you drink water, are you friends of David Drinkwater? Maybe you're related. He's from Yakima. Sounds like Japan, but it's Washington. Yakima! Ten for Washington, man. Way to go. We have Grant Otterberry. I know I make you cry when I say your names like that, but I like it. Norman, Oklahoma. Five for Oklahoma. Daniel Eichlimann. Eichlimann. Herr Eich. Well, that's a German. German family name. Daniel. Bokelia. Florida. We have a Florida man from Bokelia. Bokelia, I think you say. I don't I've never heard about this, but Florida gets a point. Florida in the third place with 16 points. Finally, we have Danny Cuevas. Do you say Cuevas? With, with a C, if it's like a Mexican name. Danny Cuevas? Cuevas? Houston, Texas. Texas leading the competition with 22 points. Oh boy, will I ever see the day when Texas is not winning. My friends, I do hope you like this change. Took me a while. Hope you appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I know only 25% of my viewers bear through this competition. I know this, so I'm extra thankful for you who you are watching this, because I know most of you skip it. But if you are here right now, appreciate it. You are special to me. Go and get the stone and soldier hat. Let's go back to the video. Every single one on target. After a years of service, I was honorably discharged with the rank of Upsilius Upsilev, or Corporal. Years later, I joined the Finnish Civil Guard, and at the outbreak of hostilities in 1939, I was called into active service. I refused the M2830 rifle the military provided me with though, pulling my trusty M91 out of storage instead. Immediately ordered to the defense of Pia Holtke, me and my unit dug trenches and strung up barbed wire in preparation for the Soviet assault. That very same night, the Soviets attacked, but we were able to repel the assault. After several days of heavy fighting, we were ordered to withdraw, yet despite the retreat, we suffered relatively few casualties. My next engagement with the Soviets came outside of Suvilhalpti, with the Soviets once more suffering heavy losses. Stalin's bloody political purges had decimated military leadership within the Soviet military, and the inexperienced and poorly led Soviet army suffered greatly in the first few weeks. What Stalin did was he purged his own nation. He purged Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Ukraine, Belarus, all of those occupied territories. He deported uh, the wealthiest and smartest people to Siberia, including my grandfather. But in Russia, inside the Soviet elite, he deported people he didn't like, who were against his politics, who were against the party, and just people who just seemed suspicious. So. He basically deported everyone who had too much power. For example, uh, generals who were very smart and they're very needed for the army, he deported. So, uh, at the time of Winter War, Soviet army was underled. They didn't have the higher ranking officers because they all were in gulags, thanks to Stalin's paranoia. Also, the whole Estonian government, the whole government was deported and shot, including the president, our first president. That's what he did, that's what Stalin did. That's why Finland is free nowadays, because Stalin was just a stupid, stupid man who was afraid of everything. He had huge paranoias and he killed off everybody who seemed suspicious, including his generals and trustees and uh, 
sergeants and everybody who had power over lower ranks. Weeks of the war for those purges. My extraordinary marksmanship did not go unnoticed by leadership, who soon made me a sniper. After an enemy sniper killed three platoon leaders and an NCO, my company commander, Lieutenant Jutta Latnin, ordered me to knock that man out. I replied simply, I'll do my best. I took off for the woods alone, dressed in thick winter gear and a body-length white hooded coat. Making note of the terrain, I identified the few possible positions that I would choose if I were a Russian sniper, and then selected a spot with good oversight of all of them. Digging into the thick snow in early morning, I lay perfectly still, letting the snow build up around me all day long, not moving for fear of giving my position away. My patience and endurance paid off when finally, towards dusk, I spotted a flicker on the horizon, the telltale glint of the setting sun's rays reflecting off another sniper scope. Moments later, the Russian sniper began to rise, likely returning back to his unit after a long day on alert. Without hesitation, I gently squeezed the trigger and placed a single 7.62 round straight through the enemy sniper's cheek, killing him instantly. My reputation began to spread amongst my fellow troops, and I would soon earn my nickname of the White Death amongst Russian troops. With our unit under fire by a skilled enemy sniper, my lieutenant once more reached out to me with a simple mission. Find the sniper and kill him before he can kill more of our own. Just as before, I once again took off into the wilderness alone, carrying a day's worth of food and several pouches of ammunition. Having seen how a scope had given the Russian sniper away, I now refused to use one, and instead stuck only to my reliable M91's iron sights. Only iron sight. This is a man of simple choice. Simple but effective. Sometimes in war, all of this fancy technology can uh, be a burden. Nowadays, uh, I would choose night goggles any day of the week. I would choose the technology, but there are instances where it is a burden to you. During the day, for example. I think times are different. It was with these iron sights that I spotted and eliminated the Russian sniper from 400 meters away. 400. After that kill, my name spread amongst the Russians, and I became a priority one target. In the months that followed, Soviet forces responded to my attacks by calling in artillery bombardments, devastating dozens of acres of woodland to try to kill just one man. Yet for all their efforts, I was able to survive each bombardment, getting only a minor scratch when a shell landed near my position and tore the back off my greatcoat. In turn, I continued my methodical assassination of Soviet targets undeterred once knocking out the sniper protecting a forward artillery observer the observer quickly called in fire support and over 50 rounds rained down harmlessly around me but skill with a gun is only one part of becoming a deadly sniper i would often have to stay in my firing position for hours sometimes even an entire day and it's that resilience in the midst of our brutal finnish winter that made me the stuff of legend in order not to give away my firing position I very slowly and carefully moistened the snow around me so it would freeze, preventing puffs of snow from flying up when I fired. When changing firing positions, I would move incredibly slowly, inches per hour, making my movements all but imperceptible to the human eye. In order to prevent steam from my breath from giving me away, I would hold mouthfuls of snow in my mouth, taking slow, deep breaths and letting my breath cool as it left my lungs. And of course, to never inadvertently give myself away due to the low winter sun, I never used a scope, sticking to my tried and true iron sights for even the longest and most difficult of shots. Though I usually worked alone, I did employ the use of a thrusted spotter occasionally. Observing Russian movements during the day, we would then take off into the pitch black night and hunt for a good firing position from where we could enjoy a target-rich environment. Once selected, we would have to sit patiently waiting for the first light of dawn and then begin our long day of precision shooting. I was eventually wounded though, shot by an enemy sniper with an explosive bullet to the left side of my face just one week before the end of the Winter War. I awoke in a surgical tent the day the war ended. The bullet left me with a fractured jaw and a lifelong deformity, but I quickly recovered the ability to speak and more importantly, shoot. With over 500 confirmed kills by the end of the war, my legacy was cemented as the deadliest sniper in history. 
But ultimately, I am a man of peace, and I refuse to take part in the Finnish-Soviet continuation war, which saw my beloved Finnish forces ally with German forces and invade the Soviet Union in a bid to retake lost territory. For me, my war was done, and I had no interest in invading another man's land the way my own had been. Finland is not a country to take over other lands. Estonia also. Our nations, our people are peaceful, slow and quiet. Also Latvians are not... Uh, we, are, we are small nations. We do not want to be huge empires. We don't want other lands. We don't want to occupy them. Finland only attacked the Soviets to take back the land Soviets took from them. The ancient, ancient Finnish lands were now on Soviet hands. So they wanted to take them back. And they pushed further into Soviet territory for, for, to make that safety barrier because they knew Soviets would be attacking back. Estonians also, if we had 1918, we had the Estonian independence war against Soviet Union, which we won. When we took back Estonia, we had a choice to go into Soviet lands. We didn't want to do that. Nobody wanted to fight there because it's, it's full of Russians. Nobody wanted to even be there. So we just took back our own lands and locked the war up. Some other nations would use the opportunity and grab as much land as possible, but not us little nations. We don't have that ambition. This was a very cool video. I haven't done a non-US military video for a long time, and I used to do them all the time. So it is a slight go back. I hope you American viewers who I have the most of uh, are okay with it. I really like it because this history is my history basically. It's so close to. To put it in your terms, it's about 100 miles is the distance between us. It's nothing else. So it is my history and I wanted to share it. I like you as an audience. I really am blessed to have people like you watching me. I've read the comments, I always do, and I, I see your intelligence, you are analytical, you're peaceful, I like it. If you want to support the channel, then become a Patreon, go and get the Estonian YouTuber Cup or the Estonian Soldier Hat. And as always, until my next video, stay cool and bye bye.